Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Allison Cruz, and I just want to say thank you so much for all of the questions you guys left me. Um, there's quite a turnout of questions, if I do say so myself, and I'm really glad that you guys uh, asked a whole bunch of questions. And so we're going to go through this. There are a lot of questions. There are how many comments? There are 46 comments, and multiple people actually left more than one question, which I don't have a problem with, but... Well, we, that just means we gotta get right into it, so let's do it, shall we? Uh, the first question comes from Apollo the Hound, and he says, Why are you so handsome? Well, you see, Apollo the Hound, um, I have no answer for this. I don't actually think I'm all that great looking. Uh, on a scale of 1 to 10, I'd probably have to say I'm a 6 or so, but that's only because I'm not very keen on seeing myself in the third dimension, like on film or on pictures or anything, or even in real life. Like, if I saw me in real life, I'd, like, pfft, I'll stay away from that guy and I just spit everywhere. But, um, yeah, I think the most part I hate about me and my non-handsomeness is my mouth because it moves really weird. It reminds me of Zach Braff or Dodger or something. Their lips all just go all over the place. So I'm not really going to be looking at myself while I'm talking here even though the display's right there. So, happy times. That is why I am handsome. And then a link 96 he says, Oh, Ellison, you're so cool, lion face. Thank you. That's not really a question, but I appreciate your kind words of kindness, kind sir. Uh, Stardita, a new no Ellison Cruz frequenter, says, What do you do for a living? And smiley face. Um, I gotta kind of think about that for a second. It's not a difficult question by any means. It's just I gotta kind of formulate the way I kind of want to describe this to you guys. Because I'm sure other people have asked a variation of this question. But for the most part, what do I do for a living? I work at a grocery store called Safeway. And I've been working there since April of 2011. And it's a union job, so it's not that great quite yet. But um, it's kind of weird to say. But I kind of have made kind of a meteoric rise to the occasion working there. Because when I started working there I was a courtesy clerk and slowly as time went on my superior saw the potential in me to do great goodness throughout the store so they, <laughs> they started having me do basically everything in the store and um, just to you know to make a long story short now I'm like on the verge of being the manager of the dairy department which if you guys are not aware being a manager of a department that basically is like a I don't want to say a one-man job but it basically is it's kind of uh, cool but at the same time I'm kind of disappointed because right now in the state of Washington uh, minimum wage is nine dollars and fourteen cents I think that's the second highest in the United States um, which is okay I, it sounds like a first world problem oh man I'm only getting minimum wage in Washington but um, right now, the job that I'm doing, actually, I should be getting like $15 an hour, which I'm not. Uh, and I've been doing it, that for a good deal of months. And like I said, I've basically gone around doing most of everything in the store, including, you know, general merchandise, stocking that, and just basically doing whatever they tell me. So I've gone from being the Safeway bitch to being the Safeway bitch without a leash. So that's kind of nice, I guess. I'm just kind of waiting for that paycheck. This Wednesday, actually. Um, I'm gonna be getting my interview and since I've basically already been trained in the arts of the dairy department and doing everything I've been running it myself for the last couple of weeks which isn't that difficult it's just kind of hard to do when you're under time constraints because uh, to kind of put it in perspective I get there at 5 in the morning I work Monday through Friday 5 a.m. to 1 30 every single day usually I stay a little bit longer to keep it kind of going um, you know right after I leave uh, we have to get everything done by 10 o'clock and that includes stocking the freight and if you guys don't know what that is it's basically like yogurt butter cottage cheese cream cheese the eggs the juice the milk and uh, whatever else I'm forgetting and just all that nonsense to get that all sorted out in less than five hours and um, got to make orders got to take note of what we're donating donations are basically things that expire today or on that day we go ahead and uh, we donate those to wherever the hell they decide to donate them to or we also have to find out of dates which are things that have expired and we have to take them off the shelf and it's kind of tricky because there are a couple of different things we have to do. Sorry, I'm probably boring you guys to death, but it's kind of a it's kind of a weird job. And so that's basically what I do. It's kind of grating on the nerves because you know you have to go to bed at like eight o'clock in order to get up at like four, and then still feel all right to go to work for eight hours. And I don't know. It's it's okay though. I'm just waiting for that pay bump though. So thank you very much, Stardita. All right. So enough about that one. That will cover all future work related questions that I may or may not have unless I remember something which I probably won't but so this one comes from Blossacubers 
And he said, this is how we'd introduce ourselves in high school. What's your name? My name is Ellison Cruz, you guys know that. <laughs> I've always gotten by the Ellison Cruz moniker. Other than when I first started out on Xbox Live, my first name was Elfson, which as most of you already know. And that was because when I was younger, my friend, uh, who introduced me to the concept of the Xbox in general back in, what, 2002 or 3 or something, um, he, he was telling me uh, that, you know, my voice is like high-pitched or something when I was younger or like squeak a lot uh, Like when I was going through puberty and <laughs> it still does that sometimes So he's like, ah, oh, you have a high-pitched voice, sound like an elf. Oh, hey, Elfson! That's a really generic name But Elfson, Ellison, whatever. So I still kind of go by Elfson I don't really like it as much now because it seems really childish. So Ellison Cruz, Elfson, whatever you guys want to The Nuno Ellison Cruz probably as you guys would know, is halfway derived from the Nuno 2, which is the George Harrison's son, Danny uh, Harrison's band, and it's their uh, good band. I was just one day, I was really pissed off that my YouTube got deleted for no reason. My Ellison Cruz, like Ellison CRZ, as well as my Elfson simultaneously. Um, so then I decided uh, to look through my Zune, and yes, I am rocking the old school Zune, and uh, I was looking through band names, and then I saw, I was like, how could I incorporate this with the name, and then I saw the new No 2, and I was like, the new No Ellison, that works, so there's, there's that uh, origin story for you, shoe size tw uh, 12, my shoe size I haven't checked in a while, I have uh, size 12s in Converse's, which I usually wear, but not so much at work, because they're kind of weird to wear at work. And people always have to comment, hey, your shoes don't match, so there's that. And I skipped one. Favorite color, his favorite, or her, I don't know, Blosser Couples seems like kind of a, I don't know, Jimmy Jane kind of name right there, but whatever. Favorite color, oh, my Xbox did a weird noise. Um, favorite color, purple, I don't know, I would have to say I actually enjoy a good variety of colors. It kind of depends on how I'm feeling, but I think I could, I think I like red and blue the best. I kind of like green in some circumstances, but those are probably my regular things. Recent tantalizing dream. They said, I'm gonna, just gonna say they, because I don't know if you're a boy or girl. <laughs> it was saucy and featured the board game Talisman. I've never heard of that game, but I'm sure it must have been quite saucy for your face. The most recent tantalizing dream is actually really interesting. Um, I still remember it vividly. I was basically on the run from the law. I think something happened in which I had to act in self-defense, which uh, caused me to murder, or not murder, but in self-defense, kill three people. It was like one of those Tom Hanks, Leonardo DiCaprio, catch me if you can kind of uh, instances, except the cop was actually Hank Schrader and Gus Fring from Breaking Bad, and this was right around the time the premiere of the season five uh, uh, came out, which was last Sunday, the 15th, and I was, uh, that's just been on my mind ever since, because <laughs> I watched, I watched the entire series, like, the week before it, uh, premiered again, and uh, I just had it in my dream, and they were chasing me, and it was, like, one of these dreams that felt like forever, like, it felt like such a long period of time, it was one of the most vivid, like, crazy ecstatic dreams I've ever had in my entire life, and it was actually, really interesting in my opinion and I don't know I was just on that I remember this scene where uh, I saw one of my female superiors running after me into a cavern and for some reason this is like one of those caverns that you see in like Minecraft but kind of more realistic I guess and so I was going in there and I I had these building blocks there for some reason like these big ones that could support my weight but I could still pick them up super easily I would like make them in a staircase motion I would go up and then I would keep on like kind of repeating the stairs so that she wouldn't be able to get to me higher and higher in the cavern and at the very very top there was this like alcove that I could escape out of whoops and it was intense as hell because it was like one of those vivid dreams that it felt like it took forever and and like I kept seeing like this girl like like I've talked about my flower and Euphoria and whatever else other LPs I've done I saw her all the time for some reason just like walking past and every time she'd walk past uh, she would smile and then someone new would be coming to chase me and when I got out of that cavern I was sprinting through rainforest it was rainy and super misty and it felt like I was in like England or something because it was cold as hell and then suddenly I made it to a giant river and it was all f you know, snowing frosty everywhere, so I had to go across there and I was freezing my ass off and Gus Fring and Hank Schrader were behind me and I was like, oh shit! So I kept running away and after that I finally, uh, I made it to the magic bus where I eventually just, uh, woke up, which I'm assuming I probably died right there and, um, yeah, it was, it was that and it was pretty awesome, so that was probably one of those dreams that I'll just remember and now that it's on film I will never forget it, so there's that. <laughs>
Okay, next. Oh, see, they, they, he has like a like a list of these favorite character in gaming. He says Bibidora from Ark of the Lad, T O T S. Um, I've heard of that game, but I've never actually played it. I remember seeing like a box, like a box set for it, and it looked pretty sweet, but I never ended up buying it. This is like ten years ago, so. There's that. My favorite character in gaming. It's a little difficult to just say that because there are so many fantastic ones. But I think right now, and what's been kind of one of those steady, um, you know, characters that I've always kind of admired, it has to be Vincent from Catherine. Uh, you guys probably know that's going to be one of my future projects. But um, the reason why I like him so much is because he's, he's he has like this confliction about him that. It seems so much more easily relatable than, you know, any other, you know, video games that I've played recently, which have been dwindling over the years, I'm not gonna lie, so, um, Vincent, he's just, he's real, he's human, I can relate to him a lot better than, say, Mario or Link or something, not to say that they're bad characters or anything, they're just a little bit more two-dimensional than Vincent, if you know what I mean, I mean, we know they're heroic and they have these, uh, aspects of heroism to them, but what else do we know other than Link is a lazy ass and Mario Mario is a plumber. I mean, you, you just kind of kind of infer that, and that's a bit of character analyzation that I don't really want to dip into right now. Already making this video even longer. All right, fictional character that you would spend the rest of your pathetic life with, based on these previous questions. Peter from Bronze the Child Thief. Uh, I don't know. Does the fictional character have to be male? I mean, that sounds really kind of pathetic. Oh, can it be a girl character? I don't know. Uh, it's kind of a hard, kind of a weird question. I'm not sure. Fictional character. Be honest. Probably nobody. I mean, you know, if I thought about it a little bit, it'd be kind of cool, but it would kind of ruin the, you know, the fantasy of their character to have them spend the rest of my, the rest of my pathetic life with, so thanks for that. So, want to hold hands? Yes, let's. Yes, let's. And do you want to make out? And, sure, I guess. Um, thank you for that. <laughs> Okay, next question. That was um, Blosser Couples for you. Aeon Frodo, someone else who randomly comments on my rock band videos. I have one question for you, smiley face. At what age did you start playing video games? I briefly touched upon this in my uh, Twilight Princess LP, but I started at the age of three in 1995. I remember this because because it was a Toy Story themed birthday party, and that was when it was new, rockin', boomin', all that nonsense, and I got a SNES for my birthday. I got um, Super Mario All Stars. Bundled with Killer Instinct <laughs> simultaneously, and something about that I will always remember Killer Instinct. But my mom swears to God it was Mortal Kombat, and I have no recollection of ever having played Mortal Kombat as a child. Uh, I only remember Killer Instinct. But after a little bit of research, I noticed that Killer Instinct didn't actually come out until a couple months after my birthday, which leads me to believe that maybe I might have gotten like an early cartridge, because I have no recollection of playing Mortal Kombat ever as a child and I only remember Killer Instinct and all the moves and stuff from that and you can kind of see that's where my LP selection comes from. You got like the Mario side of things which you know which is kind of weird to say since I've only LP'd one Mario game so far and it was the most recent one and then the uh, the other side Killer Instinct has all these like M-rated mature stuff and that was at age three mind you and I was pretty <laughs> I don't know I was exposed to things a little bit early if you catch my drift. <laughs> okay, thank you, Aeon Frodo. Good question. Now the masses will know if they're even this far in the video. Okay, Gaming G Zero D Six Four Nine Four. Oh man, you like to comment on all my videos. That's good. I like it when people comment my videos. I mean, I read them all, but I don't always comment back on them because looking back, I always hate reading my older comments and stuff. So, best black person impression. Are you Are you kidding me? I'm not even really gonna bother. Uh, humoring you with that. That's a little embarrassing. I'm not... <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, I was about to do one, but no. We forgot. Lol, no, I got another one. Out of all your LPs, which one did you have the most fun with? Or how's life? Haha. <laughs> Is... Do I have a choice, or can I only pick one? Because... Uh, okay, I, I, um, I like doing all of them, for the most part, except for Amy, <laughs> never forget, or, uh, whatever, and, I don't know, all of them were pretty fun, I think the most fun I had with was probably, I wanna say, To the Moon, maybe, kind of, and that's because I got to do weird, stupid accents the entire time, but also because it has a good story, good music, it was short, I did that game in an entire sitting, which is not something I do often, so that entire LP I did all at once, and you could probably tell it was in my voice, you know, by the end of the entire ordeal. 
And how's life? Life is swell. Uh, still waiting for that paycheck though, so that is when it's gonna get better. Um, life for the most part, it's just going, you know. Um, I'm still, I'm still too much of a pussy to make a move on a girl, and uh, 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 there's that. Um, and then City of the Damned. There's no Jesus suburbia in this locality. OMG, you're ugly. Deke, semicolon. Nee, just kidding. Smiley face. Oh well, thanks. City of the Damned. Um, so if you're just kidding that I'm ugly, you think I am in fact handsome, as was once ascertained by a previous commenter. Are you a female? Because if you were, then I'm slightly less appalled, I guess. I don't know. Whatever. Thank you, City of the Damned 13. Green Day Cusack. Hey, GDC bro. How you doing? He asks, favorite LP? I don't know if he means favorite LP of mine that I did, favorite LP to watch, or favorite Let's Player, or favorite something LP lesbian porn. I don't know. Um, out of mine, like I said, maybe to the moon to an extent. I liked all of them. Um, a lot of them have their good moments in them that I really enjoyed. I think you can actually genuinely tell in a lot of them what I've enjoyed doing. And a favorite LP to watch, I'm not exactly sure. Um, all the ones I've seen, they just kind of, they just start blending together. I watch so many, like, that is basically all I spend my time doing is watching people's Let's Plays, so. I think a couple other questions will touch on that, so we'll go with that later. Uh, Amused Griffin, I'm pretty sure I have him on my friends list somewhere. Yes, how much space does Rock Band slash GH DLC take up on your Xbox? 